a man who honed his technique not in the ring, but in a real life death match. With our challenge just days away, we're heading into the thick jungle of southern Malaysia. We're seeking to train with one of the most revered and most lethal Salat fighters in the world, Grandmaster Guru Samiri. This is my Guru Samiri. Samiri. Nice to meet you. Guru Samiri has devised a brutal system of fighting that emulates both battlefield combat tactics and the movements of the most feared animal in the jungle, the tiger. It's been my experience that martial art either evolves from the battlefield or through nature. And here with Silat, we're seeing that both of them have come together to form a martial art that has animal systems but has been used to defend our country for hundreds and hundreds of years. It was this nature-based training that would put all our Silat moves and confidence testing together and turn us from mere students into deadly weapons. So using that claw to like rake him like a tiger. Yeah. Okay. Would you actually grab flesh and try to tear yeah. it off? Yeah. I've been in the jungles of Thailand, I've been in mountain training in the Philippines, and now I'm in a rainforest here in Malaysia. Every kind of indigenous training has its own unique things. Here is the tiger claw, and it's deadly. Guru Samiri and his students wasted no time demonstrating the intensity of their training. God damn, not that rough. <laughs> He had let us know in no uncertain terms that hair maltraining was far. And that if we couldn't stand the heat, we'd better get out of the jungle. Already battered just from our greeting, we kicked off our training with a grueling five-mile run. Before we could catch our breath, we went right into a thigh-burning conditioning drill called Kuda Kuda. It seemed simple. Stand in a forward stance and stay there. But then the guru added another twist. Not only is it hard standing like this for 15 minutes, but then a guy comes up behind and kicks you as hard as he can. For good measure, Guru had one of his top students jump up and down on our calves and thighs. The pain was excruciating, but so were the 100 fingertip push-ups we did next. Tiger claw push-ups. <laughs> are hard to begin with. <laughs> Doing them in fire ants <laughs> is even harder. For the rest of the day, Guru Samiri pushed our bodies to the breaking point, drilling strikes, throws, and takedowns in rapid succession. I thought this was supposed to be fun. Training with Guru in this form of Silat really takes it back to the bare, bare basics. There's no funky gyms and equipment. This is nature training the way nature's animals train. With every move, we could feel our Salat skills improving. This was the perfect way to prep for a fight. I like you. You remind me of an old coach I used to have. You used to scream at me all the time, get me dirty, get me money. Just like you. Nice. At the end of the day, Guru Samiri set us down and told us the story of how he became a Salat master. It all began 55 years ago, when Guru was just seven years old. As a child, Sumeri trained under a master who forced him to live and fight for years in the total darkness of a cave. In the dark situation, he cannot see anything. He only hear the instruction from the grandmaster to do the skill. If he do wrong, the grandmaster will punch him. The training was terrifying, but in the end, Samiri survived by honing his skills and conditioning himself to pain. He returned to his village, one of the fiercest Salat fighters in Malaysia. He lived in a cave, you believe that, three years? In the dark. It's hard for us to learn in the light. Then in 1965, Sumiri had to put his skills to the ultimate test. Challenged by a British martial artist to a no-holds-barred fight, Sumiri reluctantly accepted. Using the skills he had mastered in the cave, Sumiri won the match, killing his opponent with a single strike. Still awed by the Guru's story, we rose at dawn the next morning. 
We now realized just how high the stakes could be in Salat, and that we had almost run out of time before our final fight. We knew that we must give everything we had to this final day of training. Our day began with a breakfast of native herbs. This herb is yeah, for you to give strength, for the energy, and to give your mind a uh, focus when you learn sea light. Thank you, I think. Cheers. Cheers to you. It's different. It tastes kind of minty and, and, and fresh, but I feel like I need some ranch dressing, or at least needed to wash these first. And forget caffeine, the guru had his own way of opening your eyes in the morning. Is this one of your exotic herbs? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you cut and you squeeze on your eyes. I'd love to see you do that. The function is to make your eyes more clear and bright. <laughs> Although the pain had to be intense, Kafir limes, or limau purit, as they're known in Malaysia, have a pH balance of three, just a couple ticks up the scale from sulfuric acid. How's it feel? You feel like pain? Yeah. It was incredible. Everything the guru did, even breakfast, was built around toughening your body for the punishment of Salat. Our punishment began right after breakfast. We started by going deeper into the Tiger Bay style we had seen. The skill is to protect yourself, uh, attack you from up, up, from the height. Okay. So I'm yeah. catching his leg, yes. and then use my other foot to sweep him. Yep. Focusing on speed, timing, and precision, we learned to anticipate our opponent's movements and to quickly counter. <laughs> Training us a lot in the traditional methods, you can't be afraid to get dirty, sweaty, sand all over you. And then you gotta learn new techniques which take you low to the ground, off balance, and really test your athleticism. After working on Tiger Style, it was back to physical conditioning, using just our bodies and the environment itself to work our muscles. Training in martial arts in a gym is completely different than training outdoors. Whether it's on sand, on grass, or in mud, or even in the water, there's different techniques that are going to lend themselves to being in different areas, and all of them are difficult to do. The guru also wanted to force us to increase our tolerance to pain. To prepare, he had us practice our breathing and mental focus. And then it was time. But the guru didn't use tiles or coconuts. He used Salat, a full force kick to the back. The strike hit directly on my kidney, and the pain was incredible. If I could survive this training, an actual fight would be nothing. It was a brutal finale to one of the toughest training regimens we'd ever experienced. But it was worth it. We were as ready as we would ever be to face our opponents. Thank you. Up. Up. So that evening, the Guru's students gave us a true warrior send-off. It's a ceremony designed to pay tribute to Guru Samiri and to celebrate the long, painful strides Bill and I had made over the past few days. In the eyes of Guru Samiri and his students,